Hi, I'm Laurie Grunin, Senior Editor with CNET, and this is a preview of the Olympus EP1. The EP1 is Olympus's long-awaited Micro Four Thirds camera. They showed a concept of it over two years ago, and people have been speculating about the, what the final version would look like for years. This is a pre-production unit, and I haven't looked at image quality or tested performance, but based on the feature set and the price and the design, it's definitely one of the more interesting cameras that we've seen this year. The Micro Four Thirds standard is Olympus and Panasonic's interchangeable lens body standard. That means that they're basically big point and shoots with interchangeable lenses. There's no mirror box, so it's not an SLR. This is cheaper than Panasonic's model, but this also lacks a few things. For instance, there's no viewfinder, electronic or otherwise, and while you can get it with a 17 millimeter lens that has an optional optical viewfinder, there's no equivalent for the other kit lens, which is a 14 to 42 millimeter. That's 28 to 84 millimeter equivalent in a micro four thirds standard. The lens is very cleverly designed though. Because it sticks out so much when you're zooming, they've got this clever lock mechanism that lets you just suck it back into the body to preserve the slim profile. Other features that you expect are image stabilization. It uses sensor shift like you have in all the Olympus cameras. Based off the 50-year-old Olympus pen design, the EP1 looks very retro and feels incredibly solid and well-built. It has a nice big 3-inch LCD. It'll come in two colors, silver with a faux leather black grip and white with a faux leather brown grip. It's got Olympus's 12-megapixel live MOS sensor, though not the same sensor that you'll find in other Olympus cameras. This is a new one, plus a new generation TruePic 5 image processor, which in theory, delivers better purples, which are very hard with digital cameras, as well as the usual low noise at high, AS high ASOs, as well as sharper images all around. This camera also does video, 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second, or 720p, but it records using a motion JPEG codec, which is not the most efficient way to do video. On the other hand, you can apply Olympus's art filters to video now. However, the more processor-intensive filters really slow down the frame rate, Another nice touch is the EP1 uses SD cards instead of Olympus's XD picture cards. I like the design and I really look forward to testing a final production unit to see how the performance and image quality stand up and to see whether it's really worth the extra premium that you'd have to pay over a reasonable entry-level digital SLR. The price difference is probably going to be about three or four hundred dollars for a kit. And while it's relatively compact and made like a little tank, it's still not very light. I'm Laurie Grunin, looking forward to testing the Olympus EP1.